Hi guys, I'm David and this is Jeanette. Together we are Low Range 4x4 Adventures. For the last few years we have been doing some epic trips to amazing locations across Australia. Subscribe and like our videos and hit the notification bell to join us on our adventures. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Good morning everyone. So to, last night we came to Lake Burberry which is a lake about 10-15 k's out of Queenstown. We're heading across to Hobart over the next few days. So just... <laughs> morning. Morning. How was your bath? Good. <laughs> so we just had a um, our bit of a dip in the lake this morning. It's uh, it's like it's, the breeze is cool but it's um, yeah quite nice in the water hey we had a really lovely camp last night there's a few different campsites around the lake which you could would be able to find on wiki camps but it was so nice in a campfire amazing stars beautiful sunrise this morning it was just nice to chill we've been staying at like you know sort of golf club and afl field and stuff like that which is fine but it's just nice to have a little campsite to ourselves with a beautiful lake to swim in so yeah. It is a little bit of a trek down to the water. I would have loved to have paddle boarded on here, but it was would have been a mission to get the paddle board down. But yeah, just it's lovely. It's probably one of my favourite campsites since we've been here. So alright, we're gonna get get dressed and um yeah, head off and find some things to look at. This is the road that we came in along guys to Lake Burberry. It's a bitumen road. There's a couple of little potholes but um yeah, if you want to tow a caravan in here, no problems at all. So, yeah, great spot. I'm guessing it's the um, part of the original Lyle Highway prior to that Lake Burberry area getting flooded by the dam, by damming. Because um, in part, you can still see the white lines on it and stuff. So I'm guessing it's the original highway. Hey guys, well we're just walking into Nelson Falls. So it's a very nice wide level gravel track running beside the creek. Yeah, it's about 1.4 kilometers return. Mm. And they say it takes about 20 minutes. So um, yeah. very popular stop too. <laughs> There's a heap of people here. Mm. So we'll go in and have a quick look and check it out. Looks like um, from the photos, the falls look absolutely beautiful. So beautiful in here, absolutely gorgeous, pristine wilderness. Hey, oh, oh, oh. 
So this is it guys, Nelson Falls. It is beautiful. Definitely worth stopping and walking in here. It's an easy walk, there's toilets here. Plenty of parking off the road, so come in and check this out. It's stunning. Hey guys, well we've just pulled up at Donaghy's Hill. It's a lookout that looks out over the Franklin River and out to the south and the southwest over all the mountains. 1.1 um, km return, I think. Easy grade, walk in, sort of steep up and steepish up and easy back. So we'll go and have a bit of a look and give you, give you a squeeze at what we find. So we've just come into the Frenchman's Cap walking trail car park. Uh, you can just do a quick walk into the Franklin River and have a look at the suspension bridge over the Franklin River, which is what we're going to do. That takes about 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're really, really excited and love bushwalking, you can do a three to five day walk from here up to the top of Frenchman's Cap. Maybe you should say for the more adventurous. For the more adventurous. <laughs> yeah, three to five day trek. Like I've said before, if I can't drive it, I don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, I won't make you do that. I don't think I could put up with the whinging, but we'll definitely go and check out the suspension bridge and yeah. what a history along this track, um, including this was where, where did I read that? Eight convict escapees in Sarah Island, which were, we were at the other day, climbed the engineer range and passed to the south of Frenchman's Cap. Um, only the infamous Alexander Pierce survives after eating his fellow convicts, so... Mm, yummy! yummy. Yeah. <laughs> This is the suspension bridge over Franklin River. It's a one person at a time. Did say a load limit though, so yeah, but it's a bit squeaky. It's just beautiful, so peaceful. Down in the riverbed, the Franklin River, near the suspension bridge. I'm guessing uh, the river gets considerably higher than what it is at the moment, the suspension bridge. So, Got a lovely uh, gentleman up here on the suspension bridge showing us how it's done. The water just looks absolutely pristine here. Yeah. Ooh, got a bit chilly. Well, that's quite a bit chilly. Ah, oh, that's good on the sore feet. seem to be anyone in here at all. So guys we've just deposited the camper trailer at where we're going to camp tonight on the banks of Lake King William um, which I think is fed by the Derwent River. It doesn't have much water in it at the moment um, but we got a nice little spot set up for the night have a fire and everything will be good but uh, we just decided we'd head up to Lake St Clair which is just like six or seven kilometres up the road from where we're camping right near Derwent Bridge. So we're going to come up here, have a look around and um, then go back to the Derwent Bridge Hotel and have a look there. It's a historic pub so 
and then back to the camp for the day. Hey guys, this is Lake Sinclair. Australia's deepest natural lake. So it's this is a, a naturally formed lake, not a dam. Freshwater lake, yeah. This is 167 metres. It was formed by glaciers with the most recent glaciation ending about 10,000 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So this is um, the visitor centre at Lake Sinclair, guys. It's uh, got a history stuff, wildlife stuff, um, information about the area, how it was formed. Has a kind of cool holographic image of thylacines, which is pretty funky. This is a bit of an idea of how the lake formed. Hey guys. So we just packed up from King William Lake. Um, it was more like King William Stream. <laughs> There's not a lot of water in there, but what is in there is beautiful and clear. And yeah, we had a quick swim in there this morning, just freshen up. So yeah, I didn't mind the camp. Some we looked at it on Wiki Camp, and some people weren't impressed, but yeah. Camped it a lot dustier and yeah, with no water, so we were quite happy there. Yeah, it was good. Last night. Uh, it came in overcast, so we didn't get any stars, but that's all right, just a little sprinkling of rain, too. So, the plan today is to head into Lake St. Clair and do about five kilometers of walks. Um, the track from Lake St. Clair goes all the way through to Cradle Mountain. The overland track. Yeah, the overland track. So, but yeah, we're just going to do a few of the walks. You can do a. Hang on, just getting out of the car, <laughs> out of the track on a blind corner. Yeah, you can do a ferry ride along the lake. It's seventy dollars each. But we've decided we're just going to do a bit of a walk, have a look around, and then keep on moving. We might come back another time and do that if we. Yeah, it's not yeah. far if we end up in Hobart for a while or something. It's not far to come up here, like 120 k's or something. Yeah. So. But we're just yeah watching our pennies a bit. So we just want to make sure that we're doing the best things that we want to do. And we, yeah, but it's an option there for yeah people that do want to do it. So. That's it. Yeah. So we're also going to a place called Wall in the Wilderness today. Ah, oh, that's really cool. Presumably yeah. it'll be open, it's Saturday, so we're hoping that uh, it'll be open. But that is um, a labour of love. I think it's a hundred metre long carving of the history of the area or southern Tassie or something along those lines. I done by one man and it's all hue and pine. And I think from memory we can't film there. I but don't we'll, think they allow filming. It's just what I've seen from another YouTube video. But yeah, yeah we will definitely be checking that out. So we'll, see what we can get. Yeah, that's it. See how we go. Otherwise, you guys will come and have to come and check that one out yourself. So. <laughs> no. All right, we're off to Lake Sinclair. We will see you again shortly. All right, guys. So we did a bit of a recce yesterday at Lake Saint Clair. And we've decided to do this short walk here. There's sort of like three different walks and it's a total distance of 4.7 kilometers. So that will take us into Platypus Bay, Cynthia Bay and the Hugel River. There's quite a few walks here that are part of Tasmania's 60 Great Short Walk. Sorry, <laughs> just walked in front of Dave taking a photo. So there's an Echo Point Walk, which is 10 kilometers one that way. Shadow Lake, 11.5 kilometer circuit. And Mount Rufus, which is an 18 kilometer circuit. 
which is seven hours return, grade four. So that must be a pretty hard walk. You're into your bush walking and it would probably be good to allow a few days here if you want to get in quite a few of those walks. Lots to see here, lots to do. Lots of Aussies. <laughs> Yay. So yeah, let's do this little walk. Mm. Cynthia Bay. Got to look out for them black tigers. And oh. We saw one yesterday, slithered off the road and tracked in front of us. Yeah, we've only seen a couple on the road so far, but heaps of people have seen them around, so definitely here. Okay, so our first little detour we're going to take off the track is to Bergie's Paddock. Nice wide tracks, it's been nice and flat so far. <laughs> nice and easy. Guys, this is the view of the lake from Bergie's Paddock campsite. As you can see, it uh, looks like it's down quite a way at the moment. They haven't had a lot of rain recently. And this is the Fergus Valley. Bergie's Paddock. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Fergie's Paddock Hikers Camp. So when you do an overland track, you can start from here or finish from here. Finish here. Guys, check out how big this tree is. It's massive. Just gonna walk along it. Start sort of at the end. So that's the stump. There's another one beside it that's nearly as big. Whoa. You can see Dave way over there in the distance. <laughs> oh, stop complaining. This is huge. Goes all the way over here too. Hello. <laughs> Still going. Wow, that's crazy. You made me wanna buy like water in the It's hard to keep my cool. It's a big ass tree. That is a massive tree. Guys, this is one that's standing up. It's called a gummed top stringy bark. They are, yeah, look how tiny I am. They are such a big tree. And they've fallen down everywhere around here. We're breaking all the rules. I just come to the intersection um, of the two rivers. Uh, it's called Waters Meet, obviously because the two rivers meet here that run down into the lake. And then there's this circuit track for Platypus Bay. We do that next and we come back to here and then we head back around the Forgotten Lake or Shadow Lake track. But we cut off that and go back towards the visitor centre along the Lama Ramim no, Lama. I don't know how the hell it's but say that. La Mer Rimene Tavoletti. We're going to go through. Okay, we'll go for a wander around here. Nice little bridge across here. And that's two two rivers joining there, guys. Very pretty. Guys, this is the viewing platform at Platypus Bay. Um, as you can see, the water is a fair way out and we are here in the middle of the day um, normally the best time to see platypus is early in the morning or late in the evening um, it might also be a good idea to bring some binoculars we are a fair distance from the water so i don't think we're going to see any platypus here today but um, there's quite a lot of in interesting information on the wall too which you can read tells you a bit about platypus a bit about how dumb humans are too <laughs> for want of a better term it's an extract from dot and the kangaroo written by ethel pedley i remember that book as a child but i don't think i ever read it 
that part of the book says, Humans at the other end of the world who never took the trouble to come here to see me wrote books about me. This is a platypus talking. Those who did come were more important than those who stayed away. Their idea of learning about a creature was to dig up its home and frighten it out of its wits and kill it. And after a few months, a few moons of that sort of foolery, they claimed to know all about us us whose ancestors knew the world millions of years before the ignorant humans came on earth at all hmm, can't say i completely disagree <laughs> with that story so i'm going to actually get that book and read it now there is a bit of internet here too so dave's putting out an instagram post <laughs> Got to take advantage of it where you can. <laughs> this post in our fence along here is absolutely gorgeous. This is the remains of a barge that was used in the 1930s to construct the pump house, which is on the opposite side of the lake. You probably can't pick it up on this camera. The barges found a drift after a storm in the early 1950s and dragged ashore and has been ravaged by nature ever since. Not much left. I don't know how big it would have been originally but I imagine quite a lot. There's not much here. We're in a world of our own. Dancing to our own drum there really is a soul Maybe now we've found our own one The same old song with a zesty lip I'm ready to explore in this magical bliss that is you and desire So let's not waste our time, baby now this is an experience guys, check this out, this thing just doesn't care I'm here. It is so cool. He's just having a feed and I feel like I could almost pat him, but uh, I don't want to scare him. Oh he's up here, he's motoring. Oh he's up here, he's out of here, he's done with us. It's like He's like, you got your photos, leave me alone. Be off with you. Damn paparazzi. <laughs> Part of the walk that we're on now is a Lama Ramina, Ramina, Tabaletti. I'm probably not saying that right at all. And um, it's an Aboriginal cultural walk, which recognises the Aboriginal Indigenous people of this region. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's a pretty bloody history between the Europeans and the Aboriginals in Tasmania. But um, yes, yeah, so it's interesting to read and interesting how they managed the land when they were here and um, how much the Europeans have stuffed it up. <laughs> but, um, yeah but definitely worth a look and a read and it's it's quite sad um some of the stories but yeah let's hope we've all learned something hey guys thank you so much for watching we've decided we're going to split this video in two there's so much to see between queenstown and hobart we'd like to welcome our new subscribers on board thank you so much guys we really appreciate your support and thank you anyone who's been with the channel for a while now we just love having you guys along and um yeah supporting us it's fantastic yeah and guys and if you want to support the channel and support what we're doing um don't forget our merch store jump on to the description have a look there's a link to our website and our merch store um we've got hoodies t-shirts long sleeve t-shirts we've got hats a whole lot so jump on there have a look plenty of colors to choose from uh, of course having the guys and the girls but anyhow yeah. <laughs> all right all right guys well you know the drum hit that subscribe button ding the notification bell throw us a thumbs up send us your questions your comments we love talking to you guys hearing from you guys hearing about your experiences etc so the stories yeah, yeah really appreciate it all right guys catch you on the next one stay safe everyone bye
possessed in the pain, ready to explore in this mind.